this is considered to be one of the biggest barriers for cloud adoption. And is data security really a challenge? That's what we're going to look upon. Data retention disposal, something which is not very well understood. Not even understood. I know there's a session going on parallel to this one, which is a common Google session, which is talking about the uh, uh, legal ambit around the data security, data confidentiality, and IT Act. Uh, but how does that get translated into data retention and data disposal? So what's the reality or what's the myth around it? And something which always gets undermined significantly, contracting. Are we focusing enough attention on contracting? That's, that's the seventh myth which I'm going to talk to you. So those are the seven areas which I'm going to talk and we'll share some of the examples, case studies which we've come across as we walk through the journey. So let me start with the first one. The first one which we talk upon is the scalability. Now what do we mean by scalability? The scalability really says that I can scale it up, scale it down. I can do it just like a clicking of a point button. I, I, that kind of a scalability will be available across all cloud service providers. While no one is talking whether that's available for the various kind of services, they may talk of infrastructure, platform, application, software, so on and so forth. So there are four lots of those perceptions which are around it, saying that scalability means on demand. I demand it, I will have it. It grows is as simple as a mouse click. I just click a button here and there, and that's how it happens. Uh, and that's, that's uh, there is a difference over there, because when I'm saying it's a perception, in some cases it's a reality also. I've seen those cases where you can just click a button and it can happen. But does it happen in all cases? We need to question that. We need to investigate that. Scaling down. How easy is it? How or how difficult is it? You know, while it's not very really complicated, you think that you can scale it up, you can scale it down, but is it is as easy as it is? You know, one, one of the common examples which always comes is saying that we start looking from food storage as a utility. So it's just like a water tap in your house. You open the tap, you get the water. You want more water, you open three taps. You close the tap as you want to scale it down, and you say. Uh, you build for the services or you build for the water that you consume the form. And that's what largely the scalability really here is in mind. But is that so simple? Is, is that the way the services are coming across today? Answer is, when you do a reality check, you need to look upon saying whether there is a compatibility in what scalability you are looking for. Personally. If you are looking software, if you are looking application as a service to be provided by cloud service technology providers, can you scale up and scale down just by pointing a pick of a button? Extremely impossible situation. So we need to understand what does it mean to scale up, scale down. Can work in scaling for raw compute, storage, however, not saying for newer app services. And there needs to be a comprehensive assistance process. I'll give an example. One of our clients uh, where we're working, they, they said that cloud is the most happening buzzword, and you know the business leadership really they got to know about it and they were pushing it down the technology guys saying that we need to be on cloud, we need to be on cloud. Uh, a natural resistance comes in from the technology uh, function within the organization saying that yes, we need to be on cloud, but we need to do a comprehensive assessment before we get onto the cloud. And that's where there was a new initiative which was being driven, which was more focused in terms of taking some of the products, some of the services out to the customers. They say it's a good opportunity, let's get onto the cloud. And it will help us in the scaling it up, scaling it down. Excellent. That was a good thought. Put it across. It was large. It was published out of the cloud. Initial response, excellent. The initial response was, and when you, when you look at the kind of the services which were being offered by that organization on the cloud, it was more static information, or it was more a transaction which was not online kind of an environment which was happening. And then when the full factor really came in from the customers, saying that this is great, and business leadership was all excited about it, came the question, Let's scale it up. Let's put up the applications which are really meant for the transaction. And the logic said the scale up should happen with a flash of a second. And that's when the reality really kicked in, saying that how easy or how difficult it is to scale it up. It took them, it took that in that particular situation, two and a half months just to scale it up, providing those kind of services. And then you get into the reason, you start realizing it's because you didn't have a comprehensive strategy in terms of saying what you want to take out of the cloud. Because if those com that comprehensive strategy was existing, that view would have always been there, and that would have been built up as a contractual part with the cloud service provider saying that that's the nature of additional service which I may require eventually. 
please build it up and I'll scale it up. This meant as a completely new request, we took so much of time. So that's where the scalability really becomes a challenge. But it's a definitely a huge plan, but if it's not managed well, scalability will not be returning the way it is talked about. Moving on to the next one, which is more flexibility. So what's, what's the kind of a flexibility? And I think this again talked a lot.
So the perception says move away from fixed cost model, lower upfront cost, reduce total cost of ownership. All of those excellent costs are over there. However, how many of you, and to me, as myself, it crossed my years of experience that I've worked with Indian organizations across technology, how many of the organizations have completely gone on cloud? If you realize, the answer is the percentage of those organizations is fairly minimal. And one of the reasons why they are finding it difficult is because there is a huge investment which has already been done. What are you going to do with that investment? How are you going to justify the cost which has been incurred so far, whether it be an operational expense cost which will allow it coming upon? Will there be no more fixed investment? The question really comes saying that, okay, I will move from a capex to an OPEX model. I really want it to be like that. But is that the status quo thereafter? Or we will be, uh, we will be flipping between the both the models. At, at point of time, we'll go in the capex model. At point of time, we'll go in the OPEX model. There's no right or wrong answer there. And that's the reality today. Total cost of ownership. Are we running both the environments? It's a hybrid kind of an environment where part of it runs on a cloud and part of it runs internally. Answer is most of the organizations today are running in that kind of situation. I'll give you an example, and again, I'll give you an example uh, more from it. Our, my organization is the KPMG. We are a large organization. We operate out of 165 countries globally across the world, and we manage a whole lot of data, and we, we are the proteins of a whole lot of sensitive information. And there's been a constant question which keeps on coming back to us saying that do you need to have technology running in-house or you need to have technology running on cloud data service providers? And trust me, we haven't been able to get answers to those questions yet. Because there are multiple complexities which are around, associated around it. Yes, it does make a lot of sense for us to look, look at, uh, uh, move away from a fixed cost model, but then is that what the really the top management wants? Is that the contractual obligations which we have with our customers which is making sure that the confidentiality of information needs to be maintained, can that be maintained? Or can I get an assurance around those? And so on and so forth. So at a concept level, at a perception level, this is an absolutely great idea to have a movement away from a capex to an OPEX model. But if you do a reality check, you realize that we be quite away from that at this point of time. Okay, we move forward. Uh, so the, the next one which we're going to look upon is availability. And then both, both, both these terms are fairly well used upon when we look at the cloud technology. I think it provides you an agile environment. It provides you a speed, a quick speed to the market. It helps you if you need to come up with a business plan to get execution within a short span of time, cloud is a way to go about it. Also what cloud is helping to you is to make sure that you are always available to your customers, with your services, with the high of time is available for. Let's, let's uh, put, put a real reality perspective around it. Mm. Outage is part of life. It's happened to the biggest of the cloud service providers. While we say continuity of services will be maintained if we move on to cloud, that is a fact. However, is that do we go in a perception saying there will be no outage? Answer is no. Outages will happen. There are more focused attacks, and that's that's uh, statistically and theoretically proven, and it's based on the incidents which have been reported. There are more focused attacks which happen on cloud service providers rather than the corporates which happen to form. Which means they need to have a defense mechanism which is so strong so that they ensure they can withstand those attacks. However, if the attacks go through, there is an impact on capability. Facebook reported recently that there was a malicious intruder into their environment. It just happened that nothing sensitive went out. Who knows what went out? It did happen. So there are all of those challenges which are happening. So availability, yes. Again, you need to bind it by a contractual agreement, saying what's the kind of a service level agreement that you're looking upon. Just going by a perception saying you are on cloud, that will ensure that the cloud will provide you continuous services. It, it's not the it's not the truth. The other way, which is on the agility. You know, that's 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 the best part of cloud. From a concept to delivery. It happens in fraction of the time which you need to do if you were going with a traditional approach to the thing. However, this can completely go against you if you don't put a right strategy around it. Again, I'll give the same example, the first one which I talked, where the organization was so keen on adopting cloud, they went ahead, great feedback, 
But the moment they had to take the next step, they realized cloud was ready, they were not ready. So it was being provided, HMT was being provided by cloud technology, but organizations were not ready with the kind of the strategy which they need, really need to do perform. So that's that's uh, putting a lenses of the reality checks around the HMT and HMT. Then this this is a uh, the, the, the next one, which is more focused on the risk side and very commonly talked upon, just, just a, I'll take a pause over here and ask this question because the possibly the answer is very known. So you're given an option, which one do you feel is more secure? The picture on the left or the picture on the right? Yes, right, right. How many for lefts? How many for right? This just goes to showcase that it's completely opposite. Which one is more secure? The flight is more secure or road is more secure? If you look at statistically, sorry, both are equally. Both are equally, right? If you go by statistics, uh, you, you will realize the left one is more risky. Because <coughs> even if one incident happens, the kind of the human casualty which happens in that mm -hmm. is much more than the, the number of incidents which happen on the right side. So many times, a traditional approach of doing the risk assessment doesn't give you a right perspective which goes in to say that how many eventual risk materializing vis-a-vis the opportunity and it will completely vary. So if you go by traditional, the left side says is said to be more risky vis-a-vis -vis the reality may be completely different. And that's precisely the reality which is there for security when it comes from the cloud, purely a perception. I, I personally talked upon KB for KPMG saying that are we ready today to go on the cloud because given the confidentiality requirements and so on and so forth, yes, there is a definite cause of concern. Security is a cause of concern. However, is the industry doing a lot to address that cause of concern? And the answer <coughs> is yes. That's the reality around it. ISO is working on a standard which will be published in 2014, which will be focusing just on the security for the cloud service provider. There's another standard which is being worked upon currently, uh, and this is more coming from a telecommunication because cloud needs to have all kind of a networking and so on and so forth requirements which will be again up in the first quarter of 2014, which will be saying that what kind of network security protocols, network security requirements need to be there for cloud service providers. In addition to that, there are SOC 1, SOC 2 reports. These are the service organization control reports, which are now becoming very prevalent, very popular for the cloud service providers to provide an assurance saying that the environment in which they are managing the data is a secure environment. Considering all of that, does that take away the risk of data still not being compromised? Answer is no. But I just want to pose a question back saying, are we in a better position to take care of data internally? You know, in this, uh, look at a situation, look at a Google, right? Google is a great cloud service provider. The kind of the hardware they run is very specific to themselves. They don't use the standard hardware which are available out in the market. The kind of the people who manage that kind of hardware, specialized in doing that. They have a complete security team which is managing that environment. What is providing a great uh, comfort around that? That you have those professionals who are experts in those areas, making sure that it's a secure environment. While they are subjected to a whole lot of hostilities and threats which are coming from external world. Switch it back into internally in your organizations. Do we have those skills internally to protect ourselves from all kind of security threats? Nine out of nine times, ten times, you will say the answer is no. So which one is a better situation to be in? To be with the Google or to be internally with the new organization? Again, there is no right or wrong answer. But the thought going forward is that cloud is there and it is providing a secure environment. Service providers are working upon to showcase that it is a secure environment. While it's already a secure environment, it's more of a perception saying that how do you get that perception out saying it's a secure environment. So that's, that's what's happening on the security side. The other one, uh, which is again very commonly looked upon and talked upon, is data retention and legal implications. The perception is, no one is sure what kind of a data retention is required. How many within this room believe that they know what's the kind of a statutory requirement for data retention? Anyone who knows the answer to the question? Domain to domain. Domain to domain. That's a good part. Someone said there. Anyone else? I think from a finance angle, it's seven years. Seven years. Most commonly talked, I said the number seven. Seven minutes, seven years. Yes. Seven year age. Okay. Yeah, so 
there's, there's no right or wrong answer. No one knows really because companies act safe seven years. Uh, however, a regulator will impose a much more stringent requirement. So if you are within a, a telecom service provider, a DOT will come in and say that you need to have data for X number of years. If you are a BFSI or a financial services uh, organization, RBI will mandate it. Or uh, you know, if you are an insurance provider, then IRDA will mandate it. And there is no consistency around it. The biggest challenge is really comes upon most of the times organizations are not aware of what kind of data retention they need. The other challenge which really comes upon is the cloud. You don't know where the data is residing. Is the data residing within the country? Is the data residing outside the country? And that's actually a significant advantage of cloud. However, it tends to work against us, saying that we don't really know what where the data is. I don't get to know the look, the look and feel factor of the data really goes away from it. So what needs to be done? Very clearly, as we talked initially, saying that you need to have a strategy, saying how do you go about adopting the cloud. You need to have very clear focus in terms of what data retention requirements are there. Not an easy question to answer. And build that again in the contracts. Because if you don't build it in the contracts, there's no way you can enforce it on any cloud service provider. And normally this is a very ambiguous area. One of the snapshots that I just picked up over there, I don't know WhatsApp, how many people in this room use WhatsApp? I've seen a whole lot of people using it. You know, in fact, uh, this new year, WhatsApp created a new record. There were six billion messages of new year which were exchanged over WhatsApp. That's the kind of a power of the two. But if you look at, it's a great tool, very greatly used upon. However, it increases privacy because of some of the countries. So I think in Canada it's not allowed. So WhatsApp is breaching the privacy laws for the country of Canada. And that's the kind of an ambiguity which is starting coming upon when you get on the cloud, saying that is the cloud service provider aligned to or is in compliance with the legal requirements where I am operating out of? Are there legal requirements which I am aware of and I am passing it out to my cloud service provider to make sure that he or they are responsible for those? And that's where the biggest question mark really comes upon saying that do I know what's the data that can be So moving forward, I think uh, you know, the picture really shows that you need to see everything with a fine pair of lens. And that's where the integration comes from on the contracting. Saying that you know, when the contracting is carried out for any cloud service provider, what's, what's the general perception around it? I've seen situations where cloud contracts are considered just to be a technology contract. It, it said it's just a technology platform being provided upon. The way the contract is signed for technology firms, that's the way the contract will be signed standard contract. What is being missed out is that this is the most important thing when you are getting into cloud services. It needs to be a priority. There needs to be a due diligence, appropriate due diligence which is required around it. And you need to make sure it's aligned with the overall strategy. So some of the other myths which I talked through the session, you would have seen that I was talking a lot on the contracting. And that's why I kept contracting right at the end, saying that what all you need to do upon. In fact, at and did a study, and what, what we realized, because the contracting just doesn't go into saying that what you need, but also you need to look upon, are there taxation implications? And it goes back to the PCO bit, which I really talked upon initially. And 45% of the respondents are neither evaluating the tax implication, nor do they know if these factors are being evaluated within their organizations. So that's, that's the kind of a situation in which we are, where we are not sure of saying that what needs to happen? Are there implications from it which are legal in nature? Are there implications coming from it which are commercial in nature? Are there implications coming from it which are based on the services and the service level? So four out of those areas which need to be tightened up need to be focused upon when we get under the contracting bit of it. So those, those are a quick uh, snapshot in terms of what the myths or what the perceptions today are related to cloud technology and where we need to be focusing upon around those seven areas. But I say that, you know, it, it becomes extremely important to say that you need to have a comprehensive view. Cloud is the cloud is a reality. Most of the organizations need to move forward onto having a, a structured cloud strategy. But what is required to have that in place? And this is a very simple model which we uh, internally within K and we have developed upon. Normally it's just most of our organized clients to look upon this model. Saying the first and foremost is to have a cloud strategy. 
and you would have seen by the stopping through the perception, the myths, and the reality check, which is around it, whole lot of it needs to be balanced with the strategy. What's the strategy you can use on? Look at the design uh, reference or a target architecture, which is going to make sure you really know what kind of data is going and what controls you need to have with a cloud service provider. So that's the second that we need to Establish a strong governance model because governance is the most important thing which will help making sure that the business benefits that you wanted to recruit from cloud gets accrued upon on a normal basis. Have a comprehensive weighted due diligence model to make sure you are getting what you thought you will get and you are doing the complete due diligence around it. And that's where the contracting also comes in a uh, significant part. And establish an ongoing management for risk management, IT controls, and continuity. So if you do all these things, the six things, uh, the five things in that sequence, it addresses the kind of the myths or the perceptions which are talked upon initially and bringing a reality check around those, all those five areas. So what, what does it mean? What does it uh, really entail? What's the message which is coming out? Think, don't ignore the risk. Understand, understand the perception, understand the reality around it. Put a strong governance structure. Promote the standards and use cloud The takeaways, essentially those are the takeaways which I would like everyone to look upon. Then have a strategy in place. Be experimental. Try looking at how you can use cloud for complicated decision makers. Perform due diligence, which is extremely important. Manage the risk, be flexible, and take it by. That's, that's the, in summary, the kind of a story which needs to be really looked upon from cloud model. <coughs> So essentially, that's that's what I wanted to cover upon from a perspective saying where we are from a cloud uh, perception or cloud myth to a cloud reality and at this point of time a checkpoint. And we're more than happy to take upon questions and answers. Read the slide in the second last sentence, you use the deviation VDD. So the question was what did VDD mean? Define VDD model there. It stands for better view. Okay, and promote standards. Yes. Promote standards. What does a promote standard mean? That's a good question. So promote standards, as I was talking upon, today the standards which are already available for a uh, cloud service uh, services is around the uh, service operating control reports, the SOC reports, the SOC 1 report and the SOC 2 reports. What it means is when you are looking at a cloud services, look forward to the service providers who can provide the SOC 1 and the SOC 2 report. Eventually, the SOC 1 and SOC 2, which is more under controls, what they provide to you for your setup, is going to become more industry specific one, which will come in the form of an ISO standard, which is expected to be published in 2014. So that's when the soft one, soft two, in addition to the ISO standard needs to be looked upon. Uh, what, what I intend to say by promoting standards, I really intend to say is that asking for those standards, saying the demand for those standards. And once you start demanding for it, that's when the ecosystem really starts becoming more mature. And you start getting those standards by the point of I have a question. Okay. Uh, suppose I create an app which is in the public cloud and which is quite popular, but uh, it is used by people where, uh, where uh, probably the laws would allow it to be used because of privacy or whatever. Am I liable to be sued? Are you liable for it? Uh, and you, you're not based on all that time. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a great area which I was talking upon, saying that if you have an app, and the example which I gave was WhatsApp, uh, which is not based out of Canada. However, that application, and it's free, it's on public cloud, one year subscription list and so on and so forth. However, it is reaching the privacy requirements which are there stated by the law of the land of the whole thing. Now, what's the kind of an implication for the service provider around it? Uh, there's no right or wrong answer to it, but yes, uh, if, if that reach is significant, then the law of land can take a view saying that application will not be allowed within that country. And that's what's happened for WhatsApp within Canada, where uh, installation of a WhatsApp is considered to be an unauthorized installation of an application. Uh, not being allowed is? Yeah, yeah. 
you can be however the boundaries are very blurred because uh, you are not based out of that country you don't have a contractual agreement with against which you will receive the form so it it purely depends on the kind of a situation maybe the app is also in another uh, in another location that's right it posted out of some other country that uh, the the organization which accepts the app is based out of a third country you have to have your contract in such a way that you have to